Hey there, this is Kat, and this is my Stand Out and Grow show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super, super excited to uh, bring on my guest today. And if you looked at the show notes, um, I have an, um, two entrepreneurs, so a father and son duo team. And uh, I feel very fortunate because I feel like they're celebrities and I'm a little bit like in that celebrity fog um, cause if you've seen them, they've been on a lot of, um, big broadcasts, uh, a lot of media attention and, um, a really, really cool story. And so, um, the, my special guests today are going to be John and Mark Crowin of John's crazy socks. And, uh, if you guys have not heard about this, I'm so super, super excited that you guys will be learning more about John and, and Mark and the crazy socks today. So let me bring them on. Hey, um, hey, hey uh, John and Mark, how are you guys doing? Hey, Kat, how are you? Hi, Kat, thank you so much. Thank you for having <laughs> us on. We're very excited. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so before we get into, you know, our, our little dialogue, just give my audience who, again, and I, as I said before in our little conversation before the show, you know, this is my following is entrepreneurs. They are solopreneurs, startups, you know, independent, independent people. And so really the foundation of how you guys got started and where you're at today. Right. So give us a little background about your story. <laughs> well, first you have our tribe. We're entrepreneurs. We love connecting with entrepreneurs. In fact, we were running a few minutes late because we just spoke at uh, Hofstra University to their entrepreneurial program. Uh, okay. But first, <clears throat> let me make sure you know who my buddy, my partner is here, John, right? Exactly. You're an entrepreneur? Yes. Uh, you're a sock tycoon? Yes, I am. You're a sock designer? Yes. Let's see, you're a public speaker? Yeah. An advocate? Yes. A citizen? Yes. You vote? You're an athlete? Yes, I am. You're a dancer? Yes, I am. You're a lover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you happen to have Down syndrome. Yes, I do. I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never hurt me back. And, and the Down syndrome doesn't define him either. Okay, awesome. But that's, awesome. that's helpful background. So we'll tell you how we got started. Um, you know, which is good because origin stories, that's what gives us our DNA, mm -hmm. you know, who we're going to be. So we've been in business just over five years. Uh, so we'll go back to the fall of 2016. And our story starts in a small log cabin in the woods. No. No. <laughs> it starts on suburban Long Island in a town called Huntington. And where were you? I was at a hot hot in ten high school. I'm gonna be my I'm gonna be in my last year of school. So John's trying to figure out what do I do when I graduate? And what were you looking at? I, I like a job for a in school. I told us I tried to like. He didn't say anything he liked. And this is unfortunately a reality for too many people with differing abilities because there just aren't enough good choices available to them. Fewer than one in five people with a disability in the U.S. are employed. But John here, you're a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. If you didn't see a job you wanted, what were you gonna do? I want to create one, I want to make one. <laughs> That's pretty cool, what'd you tell me? I said, I want to go be with my dad. I had nice fellows I've been together. So, Kat, I'm a very lucky man. Yes, I've you got are. Three sons. He's the youngest, and this is one I can work with. So, <laughs> um, so okay, we're going to go into business. We got to have an idea. You work with entrepreneurs. Yes. Entrepreneurs always have ideas. Lots of ideas, and and some of them are even good ideas. Yep. So, right. So, what was one of your ideas? Oh, one of them is a free truck. I have an idea. From uh, from the movie Chef, a uh, John Farrow. I know that movie. That's a great movie. Yes, I really need um that movie about a father and son abiding a food truck. Yep. So food truck sounded like a fun idea, and you're thinking of all the things we could make and where we'd put it. 
uh, but we ran into a problem. We can't cook. Yeah, we can't cook. <laughs> okay. So no food truck. But okay. Then, right before Thanksgiving in the U.S., November, you had your eureka moment. Um, I want to talk crazy socks. Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful. It's creative. I'll always let me be me. So John, he's been wearing these crazy socks his whole life. We used to drive around looking for them. So we figured if John loved them that much, sure the other people would too, and we could find our tribe. So we went the lean startup route. Okay. If you're, if you're an entrepreneur out there and you have an idea, we urge you, consider that lean startup route. Stop thinking about it and get something up and going. And your customers will tell you, right? So you already had the name. I got a name. I got a website. I got an idea. I, 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 we, we built a website on the Shopify platform. Okay. We got a little bit of inventory. We're bootstrapping. So yep. you got to make do with what you have. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page and I would take out my cell phone. Mm -hmm. We made videos. And who was in those videos? I am. I talk about socks. Socks, socks, more socks. And we noticed something. People started sharing those videos. And what day did we open? Uh, we opened on Friday, the 9th, 2016. And we didn't know what to expect. But we got a flood of orders. We got 42 orders that first day. Okay. And, and most of them were local, which made sense, right? It's where we lived. He was in school. We had temporary office space. And what did we do with those first orders? Our home deliveries. We were going to do home deliveries. So we got red boxes. We put the socks in the box. And we looked at it and said, this needs something else. So what else did we put in? A digging you note and candy. And John did these handwritten thank you notes. Yep. He poured Hershey's kisses into it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he loaded up the car and went around knocking on doors and you were delivering socks. Yes, I am. There were some nights we were out at 1030 at night and John's knocking on doors saying, it's just John with your socks here. Don't shoot me. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, um, how funny. But how did the customers respond? I kind of loved it and they took a picture I put it on social media. I went again at first. We had customers ordering again just to get John to come back to their door. Um, so by doing that, we learned some things. Right? Okay. Why well, people want to buy socks? They wanted to buy socks. Okay. Two. Uh, people want to buy socks from me. People related to John. Yep. They liked the personal touch. The candy, the thank you note. They liked the fact we had already pledged five percent of our earnings to the Special Olympics, and you learn by doing. So yeah. we learned that this young man, this is old man, this old guy, <laughs> he can sell socks. Uh, okay, awesome. Okay, I have a lot of. That's how we got going. Okay, I got a lot of questions because you really touch base on a lot of things that are pain points for people. Okay, first off, I want to congratulate you guys because here's what I say um, I'm a veteran, you know, and I'm an entrepreneur. And being a veteran is really, really tough because you sacrifice your life for someone else's freedom, right? But it's honorable and you do it out of the goodness, right? Because you want to serve. Being an entrepreneur, it's just as tough. And I always tell people that, you know, it's hard work. It is super, super, super hard work to be an entrepreneur and to survive. And I feel like entrepreneurs, especially after if they survive one year, two year, and then five year, they should get a medal. And I mean, I applaud you guys because it is tough. So with that in mind, when did you guys start? Because I'm curious. So we, you know, he first had that idea in November. We opened in December, and that was 2016. Okay. So we just celebrated our fifth anniversary. Awesome. Got, right? Most businesses fail within yep. the first five years. Yes. And I, I think when you're an entrepreneur, you have a greater appreciation for the challenges that other people um, find, you know, that other businesses face. Yeah. Because you got to get started. You got to get traction. 
and you got to keep doing it. And times will change, tastes will change. You'll get something thrown at you like a pandemic. Yep. And you have to keep finding your way forward. Okay. Now, my other question to you is you said you bootstrapped it. Okay. And you fund, you self-funded yourself. How much money did you guys start with? If you don't mind sharing. No, I, we, we don't mind at all. Less than $2,000. Awesome. So you um, had $2,000 to start this business idea and the model. And that helped build the website, get, get everything going, right? Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, you know, you learn things. So, you know, here's an example. The logo we created. Yep. Um, we crowdsourced that on Fiverr. Okay. So I went out to a bunch of different designers, told them, you know, I gave them an idea of what we were looking for. And they came back with designs. So now we had things to choose. So it was like we had our own design studio. Yep. Yep. Right? Um, yep. So then we picked two and we honed that. We shared it on social media to get feedback. And we ultimately came up with a me with a uh, logo that we love and it cost us $35. Okay. And that's the logo that you use today, right? The colorful we, one? We have once revised it just fairly recently. Okay. Um, but yes, it's basically the same today. Okay. Great. Awesome. You can Which see is right it. behind you too. You can right see behind it behind us. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, but I'll give you, in case people think it happens too smoothly, I'll give you two <laughs> other things just from those first couple of days. Exactly. Right? So we opened on Friday, December 9th, 2016. What time were we going to open? Uh, are we going to open at 10 in the morning? Well, what happened? Our uh, website crashed. I just saw my dad. The website crashed. Oh. Our webmaster, who was me, screwed up the code. So we didn't open until the afternoon. Okay. Or I told you we got a little bit of inventory because we found ourselves in this catch-22 suppliers would not sell to us because we didn't have customers or existing sales. But if you won't give us supplies, how are we ever going to get customers? So we didn't have a lot of inventory. Mm -hmm. Sales took off so quickly, we were running out of inventory. That Saturday evening, I drove to every Kmart in Suffolk County and bought all the socks I could just so we would have inventory. Wow. Um, and, and part of it is you get two groups of people. One group are going to tell you all the reasons why something won't work. Yeah. All the reasons why it can't happen or I got to wait. And then you get a second group. And they're the ones who say, okay, what do we do? How do we make this happen? Yep. And those are the entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. They're the problem solvers. Yes. 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 That's that's what I call entrepreneurs is they're solving problems. That's all they want to do is solve right. problems. Right. I'll give you an example of my buddy here from his childhood. There was a time uh, my wife and I were out. You know, we weren't great parents. We abandoned the kids all the time. He's yep. home. Um, and you were making yourself like mac and cheese in a, buck, in, a, in a cup or something, right? And the microwave was busted. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. What did you do? Um, I, I went to a, a, I went, I went to a, a, a different house. And I go, uh, 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 can I use the uh, microwave? He went to the neighbors, knocked on their door, <laughs> said, can I use your microwave? <laughs> right? He solved that problem. That's right. He sure did. I love that. That is awesome. And he plus does. he got to meet the neighbors if he didn't meet them before. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> but we had that in our business. It's January of 2017. We're finding out nobody buys anything in January because they spent all their money at the holidays. Yes. That's when we discover that people celebrate World Down Syndrome Day, which is March 21st, okay. by wearing crazy socks. Nice. Now, you would have thought we knew that ahead of time, but we're not that smart. <laughs> At that point, we're just selling other people's socks. So mm -hmm. we go looking for a Down syndrome themed sock. Okay. Nobody made one. We couldn't find one. What do you say? I say, I want to make one. I want to create one. He designed one, and we found somebody to manufacture for it. That so is he awesome. Was, he designed the world's first Down syndrome wearing sock. But that's that type of problem solving of, okay, 
this is what we'll go and do. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let me give out a few shout outs. We got a lot of people joining us here. Samuel, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you uh, tuning in. Miguel, uh, he says, hi, everybody. Have a, have a blessed Friday. Uh, thank you for joining us. He also says the audio stream. Let me know, Miguel, if you can't hear, because I want to make sure you guys hear. Ryan is a big fan. He says, hey, Kat, I love my John's crazy socks. Oh, thank you, Ryan. We appreciate that. Thank you, Ryan. That. Yeah, that is awesome. And then we have, let me see. Oh, so Samuel, again, plugs in, and he's like, I think I need some socks now. Oh, you do, Samuel. Let's <laughs> step up that sock game. <laughs> Uh, and I'll pop up your URL so everybody has it. Um, so again, if you're tuning in, please drop a comment. These guys want to hear from you. They um, are really promoting a great cause. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in a second. Um, but drop your comments. They're here to answer your questions. And, you know, we have two entrepreneurs who have made it past the five-year mark. And to me, you guys are a legacy because you're very well-known. And so let's talk about your giving back because you guys give back a lot. Well, it's part, it's part of what we do. So we'll start with our mission, right? And everybody, you got to know your purpose. Right. You got to know what you're about. And what's our mission? Spread happiness. Spreading happiness. I love that. And that drives everything we do. It's not simply words you put on the wall. It's the criteria we use to make decisions. But... The, the giving back is part of the business model we have. We've created a social enterprise. We have a social mission as well as a business purpose, and they feed off each other. The social mission helps differentiate us, but don't, don't be mistaken. We're not a charity. We're a for-profit. We want to make money. It turns out we like to live indoors, <laughs> right? Right? Um, so uh, I'm getting back to the, the giving back. But yep. we, the, we built the business on five pillars. I, I, it's been in hope, giving back, five pillars that you can love, make it personal. And the last is make it a great place to work. Love it. Right? So I'll quickly walk through. If our mission is to spread happiness with our customers and our um, community, we have to start at home. Right. Our colleagues have to be happy and have to be engaged. Right. Richard Branson is big on saying, take care of your employees and everything else will follow. So we, we start there. The making it personal, we're looking to create connections with our customers. We're looking to share the experience so that we're creating customer experiences with them. They become part of what we're doing. So uh, you know, when a customer buys from us, they're going to get great socks. We'll talk about that. But they know they're helping us hire people with different abilities. They know they're helping us give back. And they're helping us spread happiness. So now we're all in this together. That's a customer experience. Yep. But to this day, Every package still gets. Uh, you know, candy and candy. So, you know, the candy has changed. When <laughs> we started, it was Hershey's Kisses, which was great. You know, you'd open a package, you could smell the chocolate. Oh, yeah. Until we got the email from the woman in Florida saying, you may not want to send chocolate through the mail in the South. <laughs> <laughs> so now what do we put in? A Skittles. A Skittles. Um, but, and, and, you know, here's another thing. We've now shipped 370,000 packages to 88 different countries. But if we get an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I do a whole delivery. We're still making that connection. Yeah. Um, anything you can do, or, I mean, I'll give you one other anecdote, because everybody has to be involved, right? We do our own fulfillment. Yeah. You know? You know, if you have a, if you're going to sell online, you got to have a pick and back warehouse, either mm -hmm. do it yourself or outsource it. So we do our own. And one day, one of our happiness packers comes and says, you know, we sell socks for diabetics and we're sending them candy 
What's wrong with that picture? Right. So now we have a supply of sugar-free candy. So if you order diet, socks for diabetics, we ship you that. It's just pay attention to your customers. Mm -hmm. you know? And then once you believe in it, it, be, it runs through everything you do. So I know you advise people on advertising and marketing. So hopefully everybody with their email is segmenting so they can personalize that. Absolutely. We segment our fulfillment. We have five different base packages. So everybody gets the same stuff. Everybody gets a thank you note and candy. Yep. Um, but if it's your first pack, first order, you get one package. If it's your second order, you get a different package because we're creating experiences. So there are multiple packages. Yep. So That's once, awesome. you, once you believe, once you know this is what we're about, then you're always looking for ways to make that manifest. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys started out with $2,000 and you got this going, right? You got it going to where you are today, where it's a machine now and you're making money. Okay, so I, I want to really touch on this because of the fact that I meet a lot of startups, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, and they want instant gratification. And you made a comment of when you first started, you use Facebook. Do you feel like... So, so give me some layout here, some lay of the land. Were you um, uh, consistently doing something every day? Were, was it, did, would you feel like the video was what helped propel this? You know, give me a little bit of a background on that. Okay. First, um, I, just a small step back. You have to know what you're about and you have to know how you're connecting with people in your audience. One of the things that we do is we're trying to share information that people are going to want to see, as opposed to this is what we want you to see. Right. Right. We don't hit people over the head. Um, we, in the beginning, we really focused on two things, Facebook, and it was all organic. Okay. Building a community in Facebook yep. and, and our email list. Okay. We know your folks know your email list. That's one of the most valuable assets you have. And it was a different day and age with Facebook. It was still at a time where if we got a light, if you followed us, you saw all of our posts. Yep. That yep. doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of noise. <laughs> right. But huh. we were able to have things grow and it's, we're able to, here's how we articulate the overall strategy. For us, it's drive the mission. That drives the brand. Yep. And that drives sales. But it's got to start with the mission of, you know, the giving back. Yep. It's showing what people with different abilities can do. Awesome. Um, it's, you know, and that, so we started with Facebook and with the email. Yep. Um, as we grew, we added people. Okay. So we have somebody who works with us now. Yeah. Who manages our our social media, um, because and I think you're referring to this. Social media is a beast. It's an insatiable beast. You have to be able to post on a regular schedule. You get to pick that schedule. But once you do it, you can't be missing. You can't be messing around. Yep. And uh, at least our experience, my experience in this business and having done others, I think you have to do that in-house. Because I think you have to have the voice to do the organic. Mm -hmm. You have to be present. Yep. Um, and one of the things we do is we take our processes and turn that into content. Okay. Um, so everything we do, we're going to turn into content and then we'll share that on multiple platforms. Right, right. So, right. Uh, you know, here's an idea, you know, an example. Uh, we do a lot of speaking engagement. So this past weekend, well, I won't tell that one. I'll tell last week. 
<laughs> we spoke at a high school. Okay. All right. So what we do about that? Well, one, we got them to share and promote that. Yep. We took pictures. We, one of our colleagues took pictures and mm-hmm. took a video. We wrote a blog article about that. Nice. Okay. So we put the blog article up. Yep. That then becomes the basis for a series of social media posts. Yeah. And you can buy tools that will tell you, oh, put something up once and we'll put it on every platform. Mm-hmm. That doesn't really work. From our experience, that doesn't work because a Facebook post is different from an Instagram post. Yes, that is, is correct. different than a tweet, is different than what you're doing on TikTok. Yeah. Right? So we have this experience. We get those photos. We turn it into a blog article. We then turn it into a series of social media posts. We take the blog article, and one thing we make a lot of use of is the patch. Are yep. you familiar with the patch? Because anybody can put anything up. Yep. That gets shared, and that gets backlinks. Um, so you you take that one thing, and you multiply it out. Absolutely. So you're repurposing your content so that it can be regenerated, repurposed yeah. everywhere. Yes. And We've been very fortunate with a lot of media coverage. Yes, I um, noticed that. Yes. I, well, a couple of the things we've learned is one, media begets media. Uh-huh. The more media appearances you have, the more you'll get, A, because people can see you, B, yep. because then you become a known quantity. Yeah. Um, they know what's, they'll get an idea of what you're going to do and what can happen, and they can trust and rely on you. But it's not just, you, you can't just think national media. Right. So we do a little thing at a high school and we make sure the local papers yep. get something. And you pick up coverage on that. Right? Yeah. Or, yep. or we go and speak, you know, the, the world is opening up again, so we're traveling more. We go and speak at a conference in Warsaw, Wisconsin, and we arrange we reach out to the local TV station. Mm-hmm. They, they pick up on it. They come down and interview us. So no, it's not the CBS evening news, but it's another piece. Right. It's, it's another a media piece. outlet. Yes, right. absolutely. So you, John, you just like touched on something that it's hard work. It's a lot of work. Like if people think that, you know, pushing and uh, getting your business going is easy. I mean, you just described that, that's a lot of minutia and you've hired now someone to manage that minutia because that's a lot of minutia because, you know, you guys have to think more high level, right? You're more high level now. Well, right from the beginning, you know, I, you, you have to know what you're about. Yeah. You got to know your North star or, you know, I, I I'd always recommend to people go read Simon Sinek's uh, start with why. But if you're not a reader, you know, I'm, I'm amazed. We just spoke to 60 entrepreneurial students at Obstra. None of them had read the book. Like, okay. But that's okay. He's got a great seven-minute talk on YouTube. Yes, he does. It's amazing. It conveys the same idea, right? Um, and you have to know what your values are, right? So we got our five pillars. that shapes what you do. Mm-hmm. Everything you do, you're going to judge by those criteria. And yep. when things get difficult, that's what's going to keep you going. Yep. So you have to have that, but then it has to be made manifest in everything you do. So our idea of spreading happiness and making things personal, that affects the way we answer the phone. Mm-hmm. That affects who we hire. That yep. affects how we design our website and how we handle email. It, it, if, you, if you know what that's about, you have to make sure it drives through everything you do. You I, I consistencies. I would agree, and I, so that parlays into your customer service, which is exceptional because you're doing a personalized thank you note, and you're dropping in some treats for the person that gets this wonderful gift. Right? They buy it, and they they feel extra special because they're like, "Wow, well, you wrote and, a note," you know? Yes, and. And we do things, if you post at our site or something, uh, John will make a video saying thank you. That is Uh, awesome. (laughs) We put John on the phone all the time with customers. Uh, 
it's an interesting idea. We, I tend to think about the, a function that we'll label customer response mm -hmm. because not customer service because we're all doing customer service. And really, we're not just trying to do service. It's sharing experiences. But that what others would call customer service, we those people we call happiness creators. Right. And, and here's another example of you have to know what you're about. And you have to be true to it. So we have no scripts. Yep. And we don't time people. Because we want those to be human conversations. Yeah. Right? yeah. How are you doing? Right. What can we do to take care of you? Awesome. What can we do for you? And That's everybody knows they can spend $200 on any customer at any time without asking. Give a refund. Send extra socks. What can we do yep. to make you happy? Okay. And, but but here's the payoff for that. That's right. That's Our right. refund rate is less than 0.5 of 1% of our revenue. Wow, that's we incredible. Be customers. That's incredible. And, and then they go and tell somebody else. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Or they're gifting it. And so yes. that's spreading the word already for you. Right. right? So right now, we're, we're going to change this even more. But right now, it says you have a one year guarantee of yep. happiness. We don't want the socks back. If there's <laughs> some issue, pass it along. Right. Give it to somebody else. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 Awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So as we kind of bring this full circle and wrap this up a bit, what was the biggest challenge you guys had during the pandemic? Well, our biggest challenge actually came right before the pandemic. Um, so we bootstrapped. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, getting started was the easy part. Growth was difficult. Right. And we, in fact, were undercapitalized. Okay. I'm glad you're saying this because I yeah, know no, entrepreneurs me, that run into this all the time. Let me share it with you. We were undercapitalized. We had two banner years. We entered the third year, and now I go looking for capital. Um, we, had, we had an investment banker working with us and banks coming in, but they weren't going to lend to us because we – in their eyes, we're still a startup. Yep. And we kissed a lot of toads. We had people coming in and they were interested in investing, but basically what they were going to do, what they want to do was buy the brand and shut us down. Gotcha. And I just kept fighting for another day. Mm -hmm. and it got very ugly. So by the end of 2019, we were letting everybody go. I was in debt. We were looking into declaring bankruptcy. Um, I remember having a conversation with a bankruptcy attorney who was advising me, oh, you definitely have to do this and this and that. And all you have to do is give me $50,000 up front. I'm like, well, wait a second. If I had $50,000 to give you, I wouldn't be looking at bankruptcy. Right. But here's the good news. We just kept looking and fighting to stay alive. You're fight for another day. And we found the perfect strategic partner, a third generation family business. They've been over, in business over 60 years and they manufacture socks for department stores and brand names. And we came together um, within in less than two months. Mm -hmm. We struck a deal. That's awesome. And we signed that deal just as the pandemic hit. Okay. Okay. That um, is awesome. But, you know, that, so our biggest challenge was the lack of capitalization. So, you know, our second year, we had a banner year. Right. It's revenue way up. In the end of the year, I got no money. Right. I'm talking to my accountant. I said, what the hell's going on? He says, Mark, let's go look in your warehouse. You got a million dollars of inventory. Right. That's your money. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, there, there are other lessons you learn. Yep. Uh, you know, and then the pandemic, the pandemic was bad for us. 
uh, it, particularly that first spring, we depend in the spring uh, for very seasonal. In the mm -hmm. spring, a lot on public events and gatherings. All that got wiped out. We had six television appearances lined up. All that got wiped out. Of course, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars. But you take care of people's safety. You adapt. So we moved our tours online, our speaking engagements online. What does that do? It opens up the world. Oh, yes. In the past year, we've spoken at three conferences in India. That we is awesome. classes from around the world come for tours. Right? And then you look for opportunities. So we start selling masks. We created a charity fundraising program that was remote and touchless because, because so many nonprofits were now unable to have their in-person events. Yep. Um, we wanted to say thank you to the frontline workers. So we created healthcare superhero socks that raised over fifty thousand dollars for for frontline workers. Yep. Um, because when you know your purpose, yep. When you have a social enterprise, you have resiliency. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, guys. So um, I guess what do you want to share with? anybody who is uh, tuning in or they will hear the rebroadcast. What do you want to share with them? Anything that you want to offer my audience? Well, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to go blank on it. I think we created a discount code for you. You did create uh, one. You want me to tell you what it is? Yes. yes. It, it is stand out the word together, stand out and the number 10. Right. Stand out 10. You get 10% off anything you order, but you know, I'll offer something than you do. Right? Uh -huh. One, you know, please come and, you know, we're a business. Support us at johnscrazysocks.com. It's the world's largest sock store. If you order from us, you're going to get great socks. We have, you know, over 4,000 different socks. We have 29,000 five-star reviews, but more than that. You're going to help us employ people with different abilities. More than half of our colleagues have a different ability. You're going to help us give back. You're going to help us spread happiness. And for the entrepreneurs out there, believe. You know, find what you're about and go follow it. We, I strongly urge you. You know, the, We have an ethic I'll share from us. Who, it's ready, fire, aim don't spend too much time overthinking right get going i know we're running on i'll give you one example in back in 2017 we started a sock of the month club about three months later one of our suppliers who's also a competitor because they sell directly to customers um they started a sock of the month club okay so i'm talking about it <laughs> and they tell me they've been working on that for a year and a half I said, what the hell were you doing? What was taking you so long? We got ours up in two weeks. And now three months later, we were on our third iteration, but we had real revenues and real customers. And we were further along because of that experience. Just get up and run and go. Right. What advice do you have for people? My, my advice, follow your heart. Follow your dream. Work hard. So you can do I love that, John. Thank you for sharing that. That is awesome. And I would add to that because you did give a very good plug is the Simon Sinek book on the, you know, discovering and finding out what your why is. Because if you don't read, I agree with you. Watch the video. It is awesome. It is awesome. And he's a big believer in, you know, you have to reward your people. You got to treat your people with the respect they deserve yeah. because they are the ones that build your brand, you know. Absolutely. We're very fortunate. We have a great team here. Um, they're the ones that make it go. You know, if, yep. if you look at an org chart, we appear twice. Mm -hmm. One, it's our job to set the vision and the direction and make sure that we're following that. But then we're at the bottom of the org chart. My job is to work for everybody else and put them in a position to succeed. So when they need something, if they're stuck, it's my job to help them get unstuck. Awesome. Okay. How do people get a hold of you? Can they reach out to you besides Absolutely. the website? Uh, so the website. Uh, the website is uh, 
johnscrazysocks.com. We're on every social media platform. Just go look for johnscrazysocks.com. You can email us easily at, um, you know, John. You can email John at john at johnscrazysocks.com. Right. Uh, we love talking to other entrepreneurs. And if there's something we can do, we'll be glad to help you. Because um, we kind of, you know, here's in the end, this is who we are. Right, right. We're, and you guys you guys have some podcasts and other stuff. Too. You do, you right? Probably... Oh, you're helping us here. Yeah. Right. A couple of other things you could check out. We have a couple of TEDx talks out there. It's all um, those. One of the, the most recent one is on the theme of hiring people with different abilities yeah. is not altruism. It's good business. Um, and now we've started our own podcast, the Spreading Happiness Podcast yes, with John see. and Mark. Half hour each week, just designed to put a smile on your face, <laughs> make you feel good. Yeah, I, I feel good. I feel the cream. We, I feel great. We, it's a little bit of bantering of what we've been up to or what John's been up to. You tell some jokes. Uh, and I tell uh, <laughs> I'll tell a good news story. some good news stories. I'm going to share my free life. Right. We, <laughs> you get an update on John's love yeah, life. life. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on, you, you can find it at our website or all of the major platforms out there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Wait, uh, go ahead, John. I'm just sorry, Kat. Uh, can I give uh, a shout out for you? Yes. I. Uh, you, 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 you listen to Stand Out and Grow with Cat and Red Men. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was great. Right? Yes, he got it great. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. And um, thank you so much for offering the discount code. Uh, I will make sure that I put that in the show notes for everyone and make sure everybody gets to that website. And um, thank you again for joining me and taking the time out to speak about your entrepreneurship and your role and the challenges that you had that, you know, I feel like will really connect with my audience. Well, Kat, you made this fun and easy. So thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Look, we're so fortunate. You know, at the end of the day, we're a couple of knuckleheads selling socks. <laughs> right. Uh, and and uh, all we want to do is change the world. Change the world. I love it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Again, if you have any comments, any questions for John and Mark, please drop them in the comments below because I will tag them on all the social posts and I'm sure that they will respond to you guys. And I appreciate you for tuning in and joining me today. What a great story of John's crazy socks and his entrepreneurship and how they got where they are today. Um, until next time, you guys, you got this.